Hello and welcome to another episode of Modeling on the Fly with 3DS Max and let's make some more at at Walker goodness. Now I want to clean some things up. I'm pretty much done with the head. There's a few things. Uh, we've got a little error that I noticed earlier on in a video a while back and I want to fix this. So let's see if I hit F4 and we take a look. Let's make sure I have the right thing selected. So U and then I'm going to jump into vertices. I'm going to grab Let's say these two vertices and frame up on them with the Z key. And it looks like, oh yeah, okay, I must have already had a selection in here. So just these guys. Now, I need to fix this. And this looks really terrible, might I add. So, but it shouldn't be too bad. It should be kind of easy to take care of. I'd like to chamfer what's going on here. So let's start right there. Uh, let's go over to edges and I'll get you and this guy and this edge. And then jump over here and get all these, and then we'll chamfer all of them at once. Now, the chamfer is just going to stop back here, but that's all right by me. I mean, we could run it all the way back, but I'm not going to. Uh, so let's just do the chamfer dance. Dun, 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 dun. And we don't need we don't need much, just a little bit. Say about to there. Let's apply. Actually, just click OK would have been just fine. Now, we've got a little bit of craziness going on here that I'm not a real huge fan of. But uh, it shouldn't be anything we can't fix. So let's see here. Let's grab vertices. I want this vertex. And, and we could probably get this vertex at the same time. And if we were to scale those apart... Well, this is going to be really hard to do, actually. Um, so let's just move them. So we'll line that up. Um, as close as we can, and then we'll come line this up as close as we can as well. If we really wanted to symmetrize this one more time, we could, but I'm not going to stress that. We'll just get it close. Uh, now, over here, this is where stuff starts to get kind of cool. Let's grab these two guys and hit Z. And I love that. So let's see. Boom. Pull back. Now, let's turn on edge constraints. And even I'm already laughing under my breath because I'll probably forget that it's on. We'll slide this back and let's slide this back. Now let's do some target welding here. So let's see. At vertices, we'll do a target weld U to U and this guy to this guy. Okay. Now so we can clean the other side up the same way. Slide this over. Slide this over. Let's grab target weld. Put that up there. Put that right there. And we can adjust this a little more. So let's see. Let's pull this over. Pull this not on edge constraint, just up a little bit. Okay, so at least we don't have that funny little anomaly there anymore. And we can pull this up. Okay, so that takes care of that little funny problem-ish kind of thing. Now, the other thing we need to take care of is going to be the back. Now, is there anything else? I, I feel like there was something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember now. Now, let's see, it was this guy, right here. Now, I guess he's in a group now, so we need to open up the group. And let's grab element. And let's see, we can auto-smooth that down to about, I think, 25 degrees, and it should be just fine. So let's auto-smooth, and that looks great, I think. Okay, we'll get out of there. Close group. Let's come over here and let's we'll do the same thing. So hit five, get the whole thing. Fly down here, 25, auto smooth, get out, select the group. Close the group. All right, so that takes care of those little issues. Now, the next thing I want to do is start to finish up the back wall because, well, obviously we have some problems here. 
Now, the way I'm going to do this, let's see, let's grab some faces, and we're going to have to clean up some stuff, obviously, but, and, uh, well, I don't know what that, oh, okay, I see, all right, yeah, that's going to be, going to need to be cleaned up as well. Uh, let's see, if we grab this and this, this is actually kind of sloppy, um, but that's all right, we'll deal with it. Oh, make sure we stick with polygons, and let's slide... Actually, first, let's planarize these guys. That'll probably be very, very helpful. So, let's make planar. And then we're just going to slide it back a little bit. Say to about here. Now, the next thing we got to do is really, well, we have to clean up both sides of this. Well, we can't really symmetrize again. We just got to keep that in mind. Now, what I can do, oh, now, this is something I should have thought of. Uh, let's see if the outer edge of that is doing what we needed to do. Let's grab these polygons. Let's detach them as a separate object. Let's get out of editable poly mode. grab this piece off by itself and now the cool thing about doing that is that we can drop on a symmetry modifier and make sure it's pointing in local Z and now anything we change on one side we'll just update on the other which is of course fantastic for us and then when we're done we'll just uh, weld everything back in very very carefully so let's jump in and start grabbing vertices and start cleaning some of this. Now, let's see, we've got, yeah, we really do have two edges there, so we need to keep that in mind. And let's see, let's grab the cut tool. Let's make a cut from there over. We're just kind of tying off some of these edges. Now... If we grab this, we need to straighten out this edge. So make that nice and straight. Now this, I'd like to make kind of parallel with the outside, so... Just steadily slide all this stuff back in. We should be able to do something like this and kind of aim down the side. And get it all pretty close. Slide that back over, slide this back over. Okay, and well, let's. There's going to be a couple of different directions here. Let's pull this back. That already looks better. Now, is that cleaning up on the other side okay? Symmetry. Do we need to flip that? No. Okay, it is cleaning up. I just think it needs a little more cleanup. And a little bit of cutting, too. So let's come back down here to vertices. Cut that in so that's a little cleaner. I don't know if this is going to work, but... Yeah, they're already planar to one another. It'd be nice if we could just put them in a straight line automatically without doing any kind of fancy snapping. But this is actually pretty close to what I want. So we could probably just make this work. Okay, now, if we take a look, I've got a picture that kind of shows the back of the head here. Let's do a few things. Let's grab some edges here and here, and we probably don't need to grab the other side, but we're going to thin this out. And that begs that we make some adjustments to some more vertices. Okay. 
Okay, let's see if we can get this attached back in now. So we'll just kind of flatten that out a little bit like that. Now, uh, let's see. Looking good so far. Let's convert the whole thing over to a new editable polygon. And we'll get it nice and close to this. Let's see. Can we do a vertex snap and get that where we need it to go? I guess if we turn on snapping, there's a better chance of that. Let's see. Never mind. Okay, so we'll get that as close as we can, and that looks really, really close. Now, uh, Let's see, we should be able to just attach these two back together. So let's just attach. Click this guy. Now they should be one once more. And I'm thinking we can... Well, we can try to really, really carefully do a weld. Or we might be able to just get away with doing a regular weld. Now, nah, let's be really careful about it. Um, I know it's going to take a little more time, but sometimes, you know, it's just, that's what's required. So, let's pull this vertex. I must, I, I had selections locked, so. This guy can do a target weld, I think, to right about here. Now, some of these, we're just going to have to do a good old-fashioned weld. And what you want to see there is... Two vertices jump down to one. Now, there's five there, so we must have selected through to somebody, which makes this doubly dangerous. Okay, so there's six vertices. Let's do a weld, and then jumps down to three, which is exactly right. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, and let's weld that. We have some sort of real nastiness going on up here. Let's not move. Let's hit Q so we don't do that again. That showed six. So there's four vertices in that one spot. Huh, well, not for long. see. Alright, well, you know what? Even if they are really distant, if there are distant selections in the background, I think we'll be just fine. We can try clicking off ignore back facing, but I just don't trust it. Not with operations like this. But as long as our weld settings are low enough, I mean, we're not going to be snapping vertices together all the way across the model anyway. So let's do a weld and point one, and let's just click apply, and that takes that down to twelve, and that's good. Cool. So now let's.
clean up the rest of these guys. Must have been Marky selecting, and we don't need to do that. Sorry if things get a little quiet. When I'm really focused on the, the tight stuff, I tend to forget to talk. So your audio hasn't cut out. I was just concentrating. And there we go. So that should be all that kind of cleared up. Now, looks like we need to probably cap that off. So let's take a look at that. Ooh, 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 nastiness. All right, so boom, that needs to be welded. And then we need a target weld to send you over here. Now this guy should just be that now. So we should be able to cap that, switch to edges, grab this by itself, slide it forward to recreate a little bit of a bevel. Double check what's going on over here, which is just a slightly nastier version of the same story. Okay, so that's all starting to come together a little bit. It could still use some edge cleanup. I mean, the edges are really kind of nasty. And what's going on there is uh, kind of bad. Of course, the geometry is doing some really weird things, too. So let's do this. Uh, let me do a cut right here. And we'll connect it there. And then I'm going to jump back over to, let's say I'm doing vertices, and let's grab a target weld and just snap that right up there. Those are all just pretty much going inward, which I'm okay with, generally speaking. This one, same thing. I'm just going to cut, jump over there, target weld. Now, if I hit three, we get that whole thing right back there. That's pretty nice. Now, let's see what happens if we just cap this. Okay, so we've got a little bit of stuff poking through. I think we all kind of saw that coming, though. Either way, let's do an extrusion that goes inward a little bit. Actually, wait a minute. Let's not do that just yet. Cancel. Let's grab this and do an inset to add just a little more thickness to the whole thing. And then with that, let's do an extrusion. It goes in a bit. Will require some cleanup right there, but that's okay. Now, before we do anything else, though, let's see. Let's grab uh, faces. Let me go by angle. And let's just see. If I grab this, what do I get? Okay, that's perfect. And let's make those planar. So that's nice. Grab this, make planar. And we got a little bit of a problem here that needs to be straightened up. Looks like we had some vertices that uh, maybe weren't welded properly, which is fine. We can fix that real quick. Just clean that up there and that up there. That should solve that problem. Ah, same thing over here. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
pull that out to there and that out to there. And that's nice and clean. Now, to these guys. Now, these are a lot longer than they really need to be. So if we switch over, now, that let's see, that's just a, a mirrored thing. So I see that now. Heck with it. Let's just convert the whole thing to a great big editable poly. And then explode the group. Grab polygons. I want this poly. Let's move this in. Uh, let's see, local. I'll move it in local. We should be able to slide that back out of the way. And then come over here. Go to polygons, and we should be able to do the same thing. Slide that out of the way. Okay. So that's all looking pretty good. The only other things I that I notice here is that we're not getting extremely nice fitment with our little pipe piece here. Now, the way I'm going to accommodate this, or at least the way I think I'm going to accommodate it, we'll try it first, and then if it doesn't work, I'll think of something else. Oh, man. I absolutely love Selection and Max. And I could just gripe about that forever. I mean, this object is in front with ray casting and I go underneath. You know? Now, if you're an Autodesk rep or you're a hardcore Max user who just lives, eats, breathes, sweats Max and just can't tolerate anybody saying anything against it, then feel free to PM me and explain to me why that is. And explain to me why it's a good thing while you're at it. All right, so let's see. We can pull this in just a tiny little bit. So it's a tiny little, a tiny little bit smaller. Not much smaller, just a little. And slide it all down just a little so it fits a little better. Let's press F4. Okay, that's certainly coming along. Now, a couple of things that we really need to do here. Let's grab this guy. Let's press F4 again. And we need a really, really nice bevel all the way around this guy. So, let's see. If I grab polygons, and let's see. Can we go within 10 degrees? What does that get us? Uh, ignore back facing. Just this guy. That's perfect, actually. That's exactly what I want to see. And if we convert that to edges, well, we're going to get all those inside edges, too. Well, let's just see what happens if I just bevel this as it is. Okay, now, uh, what we can do here, we could just bridge that and make that go away, or we could just pretend it's not a problem. The, although, ooh, ooh, hang on, um, put that back, go back to polygons, uh, actually, hang on, let's undo that, let's make this planar first, I mean, it should be, but I just want to make 100% sure, yeah, see, a little bit of a, of a gap. Pull that back out to, uh, say, about there. And then bevel it. All right. Now, in these pictures that I'm seeing, there's just a little bit of very random kind of greebling here and there. So I'm just going to make some stuff up. Let's do um, a box, and I'm going to go back to 
Sorry, I'm going to call them lazy greebles for now until I forget and call them something else later. But let's do a little chamfer box here. And we'll do another little chamfer box here. And then, let's see here, if I grab this guy and I pull out a copy of him, and we slide him back here. Now, he has an underside, which is great. So let's do this. Let's grab this and click here and click right up here. Grab vertices, and then just so that nobody stops to think that it could possibly be the same object, we'll just slide that out like so. And then we'll just sink it in a little further. Let's grab all these guys. We'll switch over to world, mirror. Uh, use transform coordinate center first. Bonk. Now mirror. And copy. And then we should have the same thing on both sides. Which takes care of that. Now, ov actually, that pretty much wraps up the head. And there's a couple of things we could do here. Uh, we can convert these over to editable polys. Uh, in fact, let's just grab one of them. And let's attach. Let's take the smoothing groups and just remove all. Okay, cool. So now that actually brings us back to the real body of the thing. We're done with the head at this point. So, I mean, you can take a moment and you can marvel at what you've accomplished, if you like. Uh, as for me, I am going to kind of keep moving. So let's switch over to this guy. Let's press F4 so I can see what in the world's going on. So we've got some stuff here. Let's see if I... Ah, we got that old central part of the pivot. We've moved all this stuff, you see, and now the size is a little changed. So, let's see, if I was going to fix all this, if I grab edges... Let's see, I want this edge, and I want to ring this, and I want to convert it over to polygons. Let's grow it just once to grab the little beveled edge as well. Now I'm going to move this down. That should line it up a little better with what's going on. Now, we can probably get away with grabbing the housing pieces here. And I think the battery on my mouse just died. I probably should have been looking for the little warning light, because it'll tell me, hey, your mouse is about to die, but I haven't been looking at it, so... There we go. Now the mouse is still alive. I have, um, what is it? Which Logitech is this? I have the Logitech laser mouse. And uh, it has a interchangeable battery, so one's always on charge for you, which is very nice. It, um, I looked. I didn't see which model this is. Oh, it's the G7. Okay, G7. Yeah, there we go. I looked on the bottom, because that's where it was on my old MX-15, or 512, whatever that was. Okay, uh... Let's see. Let's move. I don't want to move by this guy, and world space is fine. But I want to make sure we bring this guy along for the ride, and let's just fit these guys in, like so. And that'll probably work just fine. If we switch back over here and go back to polygons, we can probably tweak the fitting just a little bit. Also, let's go ahead, since we're right here, and let's drop a symmetry modifier on this wall. 
And we'll do that in Z, so now we get both sides of the wall, which is going to be really handy, of course. And while we are at doing that, um, we could start doing that with several of these other pieces as well. So let's see. Let's do it where we need it for now. Symmetry, Z, and that moves that over. Now, if I make a marquee selection very carefully, like so, and then deselect, excuse me, deselect all the stuff that I do not need, like all this mess, I should be able to use transform coordinate center and mirror and copy, and we should have both sides of that now. So that should work. Now, if we flip through, um, there's all that. There's nothing else really all that interesting here. Maybe another layer of, of fitment, uh, some edges we could carve in, but no features that I think really stand out uh, all that hardcore, aside from the ones we've already got uh, extruded in. Those were the big guys. I mean, the rest of it, truth be told, you can't really see that well anyhow. So, let's see, if I come over here and we grab these two guys and these, oh wow, well, so, did, oh, those got attached and the other two didn't, well that explains much. So, let's fix that. Convert, editable poly, attach you, grab elements, and... Just remove all the smoothing groups. Now let's see here. If I just grab this guy by himself and we were to shift drag that out to an object and let's just center our pivot up. I should be able to drop this right here. Maybe slide it in just a little bit or outwards. There we go. And, you know, just for the fun of it, let's say whoever's back here might need some air at some point too. Now let's mirror this. We're not going to copy, so no clone. And we want to do this in Y. Click OK. Let's align you to there. And click OK. And then we'll slide that over to center it up and move it down toward the bottom to make it look more important. I don't know why it makes it look more important, but I've decided that it does. Now, world, transform coordinate center, mirror, copy, X. There we go. On both sides. And so we've got the head wrapped up we can pretty much call this wall done. Now, we're going to have to work on that a little bit more when we get to the underside, but I'm saving that. I'm holding off on all that. But that is going to wrap things up for this video. We're starting to get some real solid uh, feeling pieces to this whole thing, which is really, really nice. I wanted to thank you all for watching and send out a special thank you to our member sponsors who make free videos like this possible. And I will catch you all on the next Modeling on the Fly with 3ds Max. Good night.